The Russian forces planned to launch a major offensive in the Kursk region. However, it turned out to be a failure according to BUILD. As reported by the agency, Vladimir Putin announced in mid-August that by October the 1st, the Russian army must fully regain control of the entire Kursk region. However, the Russian counter-offensive stalled. BUILD noted that it was only on September the 17th that Russian tanks advanced south of Koronevo. Shortly after, the Kremlin extended the deadline, stating that the Russian army has time until mid-October to regain control over the territory held by the Ukrainian armed forces. However, this goal also seems illusory for now, since the Ukrainian Armed Forces Command is transferring new units to the Kursk region, the publication added. The Ukrainian army is trying to outflank the Russian counter-attack in Kursk and force the Russian Armed Forces units to defend themselves in several directions at once. Ukrainian forces continue to hold their positions in the Kursk region, forcing Russia to divert troops from active fronts in Ukraine. Earlier, Andriy Kovalenko, head of the Center for Countering Disinformation, also said that the Russian forces failed the Kremlin's plan to recapture the Kursk region by October while Ukrainian armed forces are making progress in this area. Ukraine has been controlling parts of Russia's Kursk region since the beginning of August when its forces mounted a lightning offensive and breached Moscow's defenses in a move that surprised many of Kyiv's own allies. Ukrainian officers say some 2,000 Russian civilians remain in the areas they control, while many more have fled. Some locals come to collect food parcels but are largely suspicious or hostile towards the Ukrainian troops. Oleksiy, a Ukrainian commander charged with overseeing the Russian population, tried to convince the locals of the realities of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Literally, when Russia showed villages, they said they'd liberated, there was not a single house left standing. He told an elderly resident using a tablet screen to show pictures of the destruction wrought by Russian troops in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Kyiv's forces have taken more than 1,300 square kilometers of territory inside Kursk. But it is unclear how long they can hold on to this land with a Russian counter-offensive already underway. Reserve Colonel of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, pilot instructor, military expert Roman Svitan said in a report for Channel 24 that the Kursk region is less than 1% of the entire territory of Russia. Svitan noted that the Russians understand that in order for Ukraine to seize the Kursk region completely, it needs a half a million strong army, which it simply does not have now. From a logical point of view, they are ready not to give it up, but to wait even taking into account that the Ukrainian defense forces will now be strengthened as much as possible, they will still only control the left bank of the seam. They have come to terms with this and have begun to build certain fortifications on the right bank of the seam. They are already ready to give up the left bank of the seam. The Kremlin does not accept any pressure from the population. Our actions there are carried out according to two objectives, ensuring the security of the Sumi region and tying down enemy forces. The reserve colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine noted, The several thousand Russian civilians still living in territory occupied by Ukrainian troops are mostly elderly and largely cut off from the outside world with no electricity or phone network, according to Ukrainian soldiers. Ukrainian soldiers deployed as part of Kyiv's shock offensive into Russia's western Kursk region told AFP of a coexistence with the locals despite initial mistrust from residents exposed to Russian state media portrayals of Ukrainians as monsters. The incursion two and a half years after Moscow invaded Ukraine is the first time a foreign army has entered Russia since the end of World War II. Ukraine says it controls around 100 border settlements over an area of around 1,000 square kilometers, a humiliation for President Vladimir Putin. Russian authorities have said tens of thousands of civilians fled at the start of the incursion. The number that remained has not been made public. Oleksiy Dmitrashkivsky, spokesman for Ukraine's military administration in the Kursk region, said several thousand Russian civilians are still there. The Ukrainian soldiers said living conditions are difficult and civilians have to rely on their own reserves and vegetable gardens or else the food, water and medicine the Ukrainian military says it is distributing. They also reported that shops and pharmacies no longer work. Electricity and mobile phone networks have been shut down 
and Russian forces, which launched a counter-offensive in September, are constantly bombarding the area. Russian ultra-patriots have begun to suspect that the war against Ukraine is destroying Russia. This opinion was expressed by retired Colonel General of the Russian Armed Forces, Head of the Academy of Geopolitical Problems of the Russian Federation, Leonid Ivashov. Ivashov claims that the war against Ukraine has become a business for the top leadership of Russia. He also predicted that as a result of the so-called SVO, the Russian Federation will disintegrate into dozens of states. What is happening is the defense sphere is all being done systematically so that Russia collapses. I can't explain it any other way. And then someone will get all the wealth and we will have 20 to 22 very independent states like Tuva, Bashkortostan, Tatarstan and so on. And everything is going according to this plan. Someone is making money on this. They are making money on this SVO. In two years of military operations, they have earned $36 billion. This is business. The Russian general said, the Kremlin has long spread disinformation and propaganda to achieve its objectives. It continues to decimate lies to justify its unprovoked, unjustifiable invasion of Ukraine. Recall since April 2024, the special services of Russia have been conducting a large-scale operation to detain current and former high-ranking officials of the Russian Defense Ministry in corruption cases. During 2022 and 2023, despite positive reports from officials, there was a lot of criticism of the Ministry of Defense from military bloggers, war correspondents and the participants in the fighting in Ukraine themselves. Many generals who have been caught on camera by law enforcement agencies are very wealthy people. In some cases before and in some cases after their arrest, information about multi-million dollar real estate properties that they own began to appear in the media. In addition to the detentions and arrests of former and active military personnel, a series of resignations took place in the Ministry of Defense. The start was given by the resignation of the head of the military department, Sergei Shoigu, 